So today's topic is 6.5 Related Rates Part 2. That's on pages 286 to 291 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of the application of derivatives to solve problems including optimization, rates of change, and related rates. Lesson objectives, number one, to be able to identify the rate that you are asked to find in a related rates question. Number two, to be able to combine equations in order to create a single equation with one variable. And number three, to be able to use implicit differentiation to solve a related rates problem. The related rate problems we answered last day were all dealing with objects moving at right angles to each other. And today we're looking at geometric shapes and how one rate changes based on the change of another variable. So for example, the rate at which the volume of a sphere changes when the radius is actually changing. So the radius you could call dr over t, dt, sorry, that would be the change in radius over the change in time. And your volume you would call dv over dt, change in volume over change in time. And how those two things are related. So what you need to do is you need to follow the following steps. Um, number one, identify which rate you're actually trying to find. Number two, identify which equations you should be using. Uh, three, create one equation with only the variable that you need to find in it. Four, take the derivative of the equation, then sub in any values that you were given. And finally, five, solve. A sphere is expanding and the measured rate of the increase of its radius is 6 centimeters per minute. At what rate is its volume increasing when the radius happens to be 10 centimeters? So some key things here, um, there's the word volume and radius. So we need an equation for a sphere that relates the volume and the radius. So the equation for a sphere that, for a volume of a sphere, sorry, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now there is a, a chart in the back of your textbook that has all the sorts of formulas that you might need for different sort of shapes. So if we were to take the derivative of this thing with respect to time, so we have to use implicit differentiation, we take the left-hand side, so that's dv over dt. We take the, the derivative of the right-hand side. Well, there's only one variable, that's the r cubed. So if I take the derivative of that, I get 3r squared. And then I have to remember to have in a dr over dt. I end up with an equation that says dv over dt. Um, these threes cancel each other out. Equals... 4 pi r squared dr over dt. So this just says that the uh, the rate at which the volume changes is equal to 4 pi r squared times the rate at which the radius changes. So now we can start plugging in some numbers. We know that the rate of increase of its radius is 6 centimeters per minute. Well, that would be dr over dt. And it says, what is what rate is its volume increasing when the radius is 10 centimeters? Well, there's your radius. So we just get 4 pi 10 squared times 6. And so in the end, we get 2400 pi. Now let's take a look at what our units would be. Um, we're talking about the change in the volume compared to the change in time. That would be centimeters cubed per second. And also, if we took a look at the units here, if, had I put them in, the 10 is in centimeters, and that's squared. And then the 6 is in centimeters per minute. Sorry. So that means that I did this wrong. That should be centimeters cubed per minute. So here's another example. It says the base of a triangle is growing at a rate of 6 centimeters per second, while its height is shrinking at a rate of 5 centimeters per second. So we have two different rates given to us already. What is happening to the area of the triangle? Here's what we're trying to find, the area of the triangle, when the base is 20 centimeters and the height is 16 centimeters. So that means the area must be changing, because if the base is growing and the, and the height is shrinking, um, the area has to be changing. So we need to know the area of a triangle. Well, the area of a triangle's area equals half your base times your height. So if we're going to take the derivative of this thing, we get dA over dt. And I know I said in this, in a lot of cases, we want to try and get to one equation with one variable. But since we were given, um, the, the, this would be dB over dt, the, the rate at which the base is changing, and the rate at which the height is changing, so dH over dt, we could then just take the derivative of this equation. So if I take the, we're going to, have to use a product rule. So if I take the derivative of the a half b, I just get a half, and then db over dt and then I still have the second thing which is the h and then if I take the derivative of the h part I still get a half b and then dh over dt so we can now start plugging in some numbers I know that we have a half db over dt is six centimeters per second and the height which goes in for h is 16 centimeters over here, I have a half and the base, which is 20 centimeters, times the rate at which the height is changing, dh over dt, which is 5 centimeters. Now, it says the height is shrinking. That's going to have to be a negative 5 centimeters per second since it's getting smaller. 
So now I have a half of uh, 16 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. And that's centimeters times centimeters, centimeters squared per second. Plus a half times 20 is 10. That would be a negative 50 centimeters squared per second, which means that the rate at which the area is changing appears to be negative 2 centimeters squared per second. So a conical vase is being filled at a rate of 10 centimeters cubed per second. The vase is 30 centimeters high and has a radius of 4 centimeters at the top. Find the rate at which the water is rising when the depth of the water is at 20 centimeters. So just taking a look at a cone for a second. This is where calculus is quite handy because if the height of the water is really low, then it's going to be, and you're filling it up with water, then the more water that you fill in, the quicker it's going to be right at the very beginning because it's so narrow at the bottom. Whereas you get to the top, the rate at which the height is changing is, is really small, is a lot smaller because um, how wide the top is. So this is where calculus really comes in handy because we can figure out the rate at which the water is rising at any moment in time, but we're specifically asked what rate is water rising when the depth of the water is 20 centimeters. So since we were given this value here, 10 centimeters cubed per second, that means that that's the volume if you take a look at your units. So we need to know the volume of a cone and that's a third pi r squared h. Now we're asked to find the rate at which the water is rising. So that tells me that we're asked to find dh over dt. The problem is if I take the derivative of this thing right now I'd have to use the product rule and I'd get a dr over dt and we don't know anything about the rate at which the rate uh, the radius is changing. So we need to try and make a substitution, get rid of this r and replace it with h's. So when you have triangles, we can make a ratio because all these triangles are considered similar. If I draw any sort of horizontal line across here, this little triangle is similar to that triangle. So I can make a ratio of radius to height. And the radius in this case happens to be 4 and the height happens to be 30. So anywhere, any triangle that you draw in here would have a ratio of 4 to 30 when you're talking about uh, radius to height. Now, I want to make a substitution in for r and get only h's. So that means I need to solve for r. I get 2 over 15 times h when I multiply h to the other side. That means instead of r, I can plug in 2 over 15 times h. So my equation now becomes 1 third times pi times 2 over 15 times h squared times h. So my volume is a third times pi. 2 over 15 squared is 4 over 225. I have h squared times another h, that's an h cubed. So I get volume equaling 4 over 625 times pi times h cubed. Now I can take the derivative of this thing, get dv over dt equaling 4 pi over 625 3h squared dh over dt. Now I'm asked to find um, the rate at which the water is rising so I'm asked to solve for dh over dt. So when I start plugging in these numbers I'm also going to start moving all this other stuff over to the other side. So the dv over dt we know is 10. We'll get rid of that for now. So dv over dt is 10. I'm going to get rid of this 625 so I have to multiply it over to the other side. I'm going to get rid of this 4 pi and 3, which is 12 pi, so I'm going to divide by 12 pi. I'm going to get rid of this h squared by dividing. Well, my height happens to be 20, so I'm going to divide by 20 squared. And that now gives me my change in height compared to my change in time. And when you put that in your calculator, you find out that your change in height compared to your change in time is 4.48 centimeters per second. So that just means at a specific height of 20 centimeters, so somewhere, say, it would be somewhere around here. That height is rising at a rate of 4.48 centimeters per second, which would be different if it, we were looking at like a height of 4 centimeters or something to that effect. But at exactly 20 centimeters of, of height, um, the uh, water is rising at 4.48 centimeters per second. So in summary, you need to know some basic area volume equations for various shapes. And there's an appendix at the back of your text that has them. If you don't have those pages, let me know and I'll photocopy them for you. Um, read the question carefully so you know which equation to use and whether or not you need to use a second equation to help rewrite the first with only one variable. And then you just need to know how to use implicit differentiation. 
So your assignment is on pages 290 to 291. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.